This hearing will come to order. Uh, quick housekeeping. Um, our understanding is votes on the floor may happen, we thought, 11, 1130. Now they're saying maybe as early as the next 20 to 30 minutes. Um, so we're going to try to get uh, through your testimony and hopefully a, a round of questions. Um, my worry is that when the votes go up, it may be a long series, and I'd, I'm going to try not to have you, uh, you know, sitting here waiting, but we'll hope for votes being a little little later than uh, than usual or than expected. Um, purpose of today's hearing, I'm going to shorten my uh, opening remarks uh, for the purpose of getting to your testimony as quickly as we can. But the purpose of today's hearing is to uh, evaluate the effectiveness and security of financial systems at the Department of Homeland Security. DHS is one of the largest federal departments and spent $56.4 billion on its operations in 2010. Because of the size and importance of DHS, it is crucial that we have strong financial management systems and that data is properly protected. However, in 2010, the independent auditors found numerous weaknesses in DHS's financial management and information technology security systems. And this hearing will examine the results of that audit and DHS's progress in resolving the problems in its financial management systems. The audit was conducted by the independent auditing firm KPMG um, and identified 161 weaknesses in DHS's internal controls over crucial financial systems. Almost two-thirds of the weaknesses were repeats from KPMG's 2009 audit of the Department. The findings contributed to five significant weaknesses as well, well as one material weakness in information technology and financial system functionality. DHS has been working continuously to improve its financial management and its efforts should be acknowledged. However, as this audit shows, there are still significant problems and the Department must address these problems. Many of these deficiencies are long-term that have never been resolved. This hearing is intended to review the findings of the audit and evaluate how we can better address these uh, identified deficiencies. Uh, the subcommittee appreciates DHS's ongoing work to f improve its financial management and, uh, and its cooperation and uh, assistance with the auditors. I certainly want to thank our witnesses for being here today uh, and to share your expertise and insights with us to allow our committee uh, in our oversight role to be more effective in partnering with you um, and the full committee in uh, trying to achieve what we're all after, which is a efficient, well-run, accountable department and how we handle the um, public's funds uh, and uh, fulfill your mission, uh, which is so important to our nation's security. Um, with that, I am going to submit my entire record, uh, my entire statement for the record uh, and yield to the ranking member, Mr. Towns, from New York for the purpose of an opening statement. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that for holding this hearing on such an important issue. I thank our witnesses for their appearance before the committee and for their testimony today. And Ms. Sherry, it's good to see you again. Federal government information systems are constantly under threat of cyber attack. And the incidence of cyber attacks has escalated in recent years. It is critical that we maintain strong defenses to those attacks. The Department of Homeland Security is responsible for the cybersecurity of most of the executive branch agencies. It is, almost, uh, it is also responsible for protecting its own information system from attack. Our success at keeping our information system safe depends on how well the Department executes internal controls over its components. Today we examine the weaknesses in the Department's internal controls and how we can eliminate them to improve defenses against present and future threats. In fiscal year 2010, the auditors from KPMG listed more than 161 findings that the Chairman mentioned. The audit concluded that old legacy computer systems are impairing the functionality of DHS financial management system as a whole. The audit also found many weaknesses in controlling access to sensitive data facilities and financial information in the Department. These weaknesses go straight to the heart of protecting against outside threats and to equality of data that feeds the DHS financial system. I would like to get answers to at least 
two issues from this hearing today. First, what progress has the Department made in the months since the audit report was issued in addressing material weaknesses and IT control deficiencies that were identified? Second, what is the status of updating and integrating your old legacy computer system that is impairing financial accountability in the Department? As the Department successfully works through these issues, we should begin to see a decrease in internal control weaknesses over financial reporting and increase protection over information systems from threats within and outside of the United States. This committee is here to assist you. This is not one of those I got you committees. Even though they do exist here uh, in this House, but this is not one. We are here to see how we can work together and to see how we can help you. And, and I know it because at one time I was chairman and uh, the chairman was ranking, and now you can see he's chairman and I'm ranking. So we've been working on this for quite some time and we're willing to continue to work with you. On that note, I yield back and I recognize that uh, the schedule, Mr. Chairman, and I'm willing to cooperate with you in every way I can to make certain that we follow. I, I thank the, the gentleman and I appreciate your uh, very um, appropriate remarks that, that our efforts is about partnering and a uh, partner between us uh, in a, in a nonpartisan way um, as a Chairman Ranking Member, Chairman Ranking Member reversed in the past. Uh, and with, with you, and uh, that we're all after that same goal. Uh, we are uh, delighted to have um, uh, several very distinguished um, witnesses before us who bring uh, uh, great insights into the issues that we're uh, addressing here today. Um, we're going to um, uh, first start uh, uh, Ms. Peggy Sherry, uh, Deputy Chief Financial Officer, as well as Acting uh, Chief Financial Officer at the Department of Homeland Security, uh, Mr. Robert West, um, Chief Information Security Officer at the Department, uh, Mr. John McCoy, Deputy Assistant Inspector General for Audits at the Office of Inspector General for the Department of Homeland Security. Um, if I could, it is the uh, practice of the committee that we swear in all of our witnesses. So if I could ask the three of you to stand and raise your right hand. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give to this committee is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. Thank you. You may be seated. In the Clerk will reflect that the witnesses answered in the affirmative. And again, uh, apologize for the abbreviated introductions, uh, but uh, to try to accommodate everyone's schedules, uh, we'll go to uh, your testimony. If you can try to limit it to about five minutes, your, your full uh, testimonies are submitted for the record, and then we'll get into questions. So, uh, Ms. Sherry, if you could begin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman Platts, Ranking Member Towns, and members of the committee for the opportunity to provide information on the fiscal year 2010 audit findings and the processes that have been put in place to correct our internal control weaknesses. When DHS was formed, our initial audits identified pervasive material weaknesses, weakness conditions in financial system security controls across all DHS components. Through a strong partnership between my office and the Chief Information Security Officer, we have been successful in correcting many IT control risks. And by fostering a positive working relationship with the Office of the Inspector General and our external auditors, we have been able to move the Department forward in addressing IT and financial management control weaknesses. Over the past few years, we have significantly reduced IT material weakness conditions and largely contained them to three components. We expect this year's audit to reflect significant progress at the United States Coast Guard, FEMA, and at ICE. In addition to our strong partnership with the Chief Information Security Officer, we have also developed a focused approach to systematically evaluating the areas of greatest risk. Components developed action plans to target these high-risk areas, and my office reviewed and provided input to ensure these plans are comprehensive, reasonable, and address the root cause of our IT weaknesses. Over the past five years, the Department has made significant progress improving our internal control environment, including the IT environment. During 2007 and 2008, the CFO and CISO worked together to build an internal control program to assess controls over our CFO-designated systems. We provided comprehensive guidance to the entire Department on how to secure financially significant systems. In 2009, we used that guidance to perform a baseline IT internal control assessment at many of our components. 
This assessment included testing the design and effectiveness of IT controls. Due to the repeating nature of some IT findings, in fiscal year 2010, we focused on ensuring that the Department's IT plans of action were addressing and designed to correct the root causes of the most material IT findings. And we used independent verification and validation techniques to ensure corrective actions were being implemented across the IT control environment. This targeted approach allowed us to address many of the causes of repeat IT NFRs with the goal of permanent correction. I would like to highlight some of the work undertaken this year to address specific component findings. The United States Coast Guard has created an oversight process to identify and evaluate system scripts or computer pr uh, processing code that have an impact on financial statements. The Coast Guard also updated their policies and procedures, developed a desk guide to provide training, and created a segregation of duties policy. Along with my office and Mr. West's office, the FEMA CFO and CIO worked very closely this year, and as a result, significant progress in closing system audit findings occurred. They instituted a recertification process for users of the National Emergency Management Information System and remediated many control deficiencies surrounding the National Flood Insurance Program. ICE also made progress this year, and in the coming months, they will be updating their database server. This improvement will make needed corrections in ICE's financial system and, along with increased training and user awareness, provide greater controls against duplicate payments in the future. This is just some of the work our components continue to do to remediate control deficiencies and demonstrate progress to adhere to the tenets of the Financial Accountability Act. Even though the Department has shown significant improvement over the past few years in financial management and in improving security, system security, financial management remains challenging as a result of IT functionality limitations in certain financial systems. Some legacy systems limit our ability to develop application controls to support financial reporting and operations, limit our ability to provide timely and accurate data, and contribute to inefficient labor-intensive processes and the need for extensive workarounds and compensating manual controls. Limitations include lack of integration in some of our systems, IT system configuration limitations, systems lacking key application controls and that which are more efficient and, and effective and reliable than manual controls. These conditions hinder our ability to provide sustainable internal controls to support the audit, as well as to ensure our control systems are designed to achieve our missions, which is another key objective of the Financial Accountability Act. These weaknesses highlight the need to modernize certain legacy systems, and this remains a priority for the Department. And while we work with components to develop a path forward, we continue to help them to improve and standardize their business processes and internal controls. We are implementing a common line of accounting, and we are developing common data standards, all very critical. Using the objectives outlined in the Accountability Act, we continue to make significant progress in improving financial management, and I'm fortunate to work with the dedicated staff at DHS, as well as have the support of Department leadership and the Chief Information Security Officer and our auditors as we continue these efforts. I thank you for appreciate the efforts we've received from this committee and Congress, and I look forward to working with you in the future. And I'm happy to take questions later, sir. Thank you, Ms. Sherry. Mr. West? Chairman Platts, uh, Ranking Member Towns, and members of the committee, thank you and good morning. I'm Robert West, Chief Information Security Officer for the Department of Homeland Security, and I would like to provide you an update on the Department's progress in addressing the Department's IT financial management control weaknesses. Department leadership takes all, financial, uh, all audit findings seriously, and we're fully committed to resolving these issues as quickly as possible. First, I would like to uh, acknowledge the progress that we have made in improving the Department's overall IT security posture since the stand-up of the Department in 2003. Over the last year, eight years, we have reduced both IT security risks and costs by successfully transitioning from a, from a highly decentralized IT environment to a modern enterprise ecosystem with a robust set of shared services and common security controls. DHS inherited a complex legacy environment that included approximately 1,100 separate and unique IT systems and one where each system owner was an individually accountable for all security controls. Today, our IT systems are more secure than ever before, due in large part to the fact that we have instituted an enterprise security architecture. We call it mission assurance through defense in depth. We consolidated six legacy wide area networks into a single, secure, modern, 
fully encrypted backbone infrastructure, and we have also made significant progress in consolidating multiple data centers into two modern enterprise data centers. These new data centers have been designed with also with a robust set of security controls that support all systems, including financial systems, that operate in these environments. We have also consolidated our inter Internet access behind redundant trusted Internet connections. Within this enterprise in environment, the Department today operates 783 systems in support of the various missions of the Department, and 32 of these systems support the Department's financial management and reporting and are considered material to the financial statements. Most of these financial systems have been in operation for many years, and they predate the Department's creation in 2003. While these systems are certainly more secure due to the fact that they operate within the enterprise environment that I explained, um, some of these systems are still missing a number of important system-specific controls and cannot fully support business processes that ensure accurate financial reporting. Heavily manual processes are still required to compensate for a lack of fully automated technical controls, highlighting the need to modernize these legacy systems. Second, I would like to briefly discuss the nature of audits themselves. Auditors necessarily report what they observe, and often those reserve, uh, reported observations are only symptoms of larger issues. For this reason, the Department not only systematically reviews all notice of findings and recommendations from com uh, with component leadership, and we also require uh, at least one action plan for each finding issued, but, we, but additionally, we also have institutionalized a three-phased approach to identify and better understand systemic issues. This approach includes a current state assessment, root cause analyses, and independent validation and verification of component action plans by the Department. We have also provided root cause analysis training to components so they can better develop realistic cor corrective action plans that address root causes. Finally, significant weaknesses identified in the 2010 IT management letter center around five key areas, access controls, configuration management, security management, contingency planning and segregation of duties. I have outlined specific actions taken to address each of these areas in written testimony, and I would be happy to discuss each of those in more detail if, if you desire. In closing, I would like to reiterate that the Office of the CIO and the Office of the CIO, including my office, along with the Office of the Chief Procurement Officer, Program Accountability and Risk Management Office, and all appropriate component offices are working closely together to ensure financial modernization projects are planned and executed to meet reporting requirements and minimize costs for financial operations. DHS remains fully committed to improving our financial system security in order to provide timely, accurate, and complete financial information to our key stakeholders, including you, the Congress, and the American taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. West. Mr. McCoy. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Towns, and members of the committee. I'm John McCoy II, Deputy Assistant Inspector General for Audits with the Department of Homeland Security. Thank you for inviting me today to discuss financial management weaknesses at DHS. My testimony today will focus on information technology or IT issues identified during the fiscal year 2010 financial statement audit conducted by the independent accounting firm KPMG. In fiscal year 2010, KPMG identified 161 IT deficiencies, of which approximately 65 percent are repeated from fiscal year 2009. KPMG also noted that DHS's financial systems have many functional limitations that affect the Department's ability to implement and maintain internal controls. From a financial statement perspective, DHS's five most significant weaknesses are access controls, configuration management, security management, contingency planning, and segregation of duties. KPMG noted access control weaknesses at several of the DHS components that allowed excessive potential for unauthorized access to key financial systems. Also at several of the components, KPMG observed configuration management controls that were not fully defined, followed, or effective. Security man management weaknesses were identified at several DHS components where financial systems as well as general support systems were not properly certified and accredited. KPMG also found scenarios where roles and responsibilities were not clearly defined, a lack of policies and procedures, and noncompliance with existing policies. KPMG noted weaknesses in contingency planning. There were instances of un incomplete or outdated business continuity plans, systems without incomplete or outdated disaster recovery plans. Some plans were not adequately tested and did not contain current system information, 
emergency processing priorities, or procedures for backup and storage. At several of the DHS components, KPMG noted a lack of proper segregation of duties for roles and responsibilities within financial systems. Collectively, these IT control deficiencies limited the Department's ability to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of critical financial and operational data. KP KPMG considers these control deficiencies to collectively represent a material weakness for DHS under established professional auditing standards. The fiscal year 2010 audit also looked at the functionality of DHS's financial systems. Many of the Department's financial systems have not been substantially updated since the creation of DHS. Some components cannot modify IT system core software or install controls to prevent duplicate payments. This contributed to duplicate payments made by Immigrations and Customs Enforcements in fiscal years 2009, 2010, and 2011. These and other IT system limitations also lead to extensive manual and redundant procedures to process transactions, verify the accuracy of data, and prepare financial statements. DHS has made several attempts to modernize its financial systems. Its most recent initiative was the Transformation and Systems Consolidation, or TASC. TASC was canceled in March 2011 after the Government Accountability Office sustained one of the bid protests. GAO recommended that DHS reevaluate its requirements with regards to the estimated scope and pace of work, as well as the integrated solution requirement. In September, the Undersecretary of Management announced that the Department would now pursue a decentralized approach instead of an enterprise-wide solution. The implementation of a new financial systems solution combined with improving IT security controls should allow the Department to achieve greater effectiveness in its financial management. We will continue our positive working relationship with the Department by taking a proactive approach to overseeing DHS's financial management and IT security improvement efforts. We look forward to continuing our audit efforts and providing the results and solutions to the Secretary and to the Congress. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my prepared statement. Thank you for this opportunity. I welcome any questions from you or the members. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Again, thanks to all, all three of you for your, your testimony here today as well as your written testimony. Um, and having that in advance certainly helps uh, allow me to be better prepared for uh, today's hearing. Getting an echo here. I'm not sure if you are or not, but I'll try to back away from the mic. But um, I, I guess I want to start, you know, one of the things that jumps out is um, the, the, you know, Mr. McCoy just referenced in his testimony the 65 percent repeat uh, deficiencies. Uh, this is the 010 uh, in fiscal year that we're you know still looking at. 11 has just ended. Um, if if uh, each of you would want to comment based on you know the best of your ability at this point, what are we likely to see on the 011 um, audit regarding repeat deficiencies and and what progress are we making that the ones that are identified we're doing a better job of closing them and shrinking that number because. Um, you know, we, we did start, you know, as, as you referenced, uh, Mr. West, uh, the legacy system, some dramatic challenges. And I think 18 material witnesses when the department was first formed, but that was eight years ago. And, and uh, we're now eight years later. So if each of you could comment, you know, on the issue of the repeat weaknesses and, and what to expect in the coming audit. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Chairman. Um, and yes, and that that is something that clearly, uh, Mr. West and I, when we had seen the uh, the number of the repeat findings, was something that we really uh, realized that we did have to address. Um, I think that the process that we've used over the last five years has really gotten us to the point where we will see some success this year. We will see more remediation. Uh, in particular, you'll notice that the IG and the KPMG had pointed out that FEMA in particular had had issues in this area. As far as what is part of the process they identify at the beginning of the year, do they think they've actually corrected um, a particular finding? FEMA in particular had identified things that they thought were corrected, which in fact were not corrected. Um, one of the approaches that we used this year for the last few years was really to identify, work very closely with the components to see if they were identifying the root causes of the NFRs. As Mr. West pointed out, some Sometimes it's just a symptom. It doesn't really point to exactly the reasons why you're having particular weaknesses. So his office, my office, worked very closely with the CIO over at FEMA as well as the CFO, which was a new, which
which was a, a new paradigm for us. We had them working very closely together. Clearly, it's worked well for the Department, encouraging the components to do that as well. So they worked very closely. Um, and I think that what you will see this year is FEMA really was able to better assess which of those NFRs they would be able to correct. Um, they were at by, and the reason they were able to do that is because they were able to address the root causes. They were also able to work with their business partners within the, within the FEMA to really identify what those root causes are. So I think that what you will see this year um, is, is, a, is improvement in that particular area. Yeah, and I, I appreciate the focus on FEMA. I think over a third of the deficiencies are FEMA, and I think 80 percent of FEMAs are repeat That's deficiencies. That's exactly right. So that focus, I think, in the big picture help, and hopefully that then carries across all the component agencies. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. West or Mr. McCoy? Uh, yes, sir. I, I would like to make two comments. Um, one, um, I mean, I, I don't want to minimize the importance of, of the findings, and, 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 and we take all findings seriously. Our goal is to close all audit findings. We use the, the fact that some are associated with a material weakness as a way to prioritize our efforts, right. but, but any finding is something that needs to be closed, and, and I want to acknowledge that up front. I haven't said that I would, d d when, when you look at the way the process works, um, unlike the FISMA audit, which is my other world, um, the FISMA audit is generally a snapshot in time, and it's just, it says this is the state of a program mm -hmm. at a given date. With the financial systems audits, it, we, we have to show the auditors, we have to convince the auditors that controls have been affected for the entire audit cycle, generally a year, before we can close them. So the way the process works is that that there will be a find, notice of finding a recommendation, sometimes with maybe as many as seven or eight uh, specific findings within that one NFR. Uh, we remediate. At some point, we believe that we have fixed the problem, and we assert the next audit cycle back to the auditors that, uh, that, that we think this is closed. The auditors then review that, and uh, they can either agree and close the audit. They can say six or eight are closed, and, but you have still got work to do. Or they, in, in some cases, even will get, uh, in a number of cases, frankly, will get audit, uh, in, in, NFRs issued where it's, a no, uh, it's findings with no recommendations, meaning, okay, you've, we think you've, the, the controls you've put in place are, effect, are, are good, you've, you've solved the problem, but we can't rely on it for the entire audit cycle, the whole year. So um, when we get repeat findings, it, I, I would temper that just a bit. I don't, I don't want to downplay it. I mean, we, like I said, we take them all seriously. But there is a, a, an audit pace that goes with these, and it is generally uh, one or two years before you actually get to the point where something is, is fully closed with the auditors. Uh, the second thing I want to mention real quick is with FEMA. Um, the, the thing that, that, that I think uh, the, the issue in 2010 with FEMA being the large majority um, is, is that the way that they were looking at NFRs uh, at that time, they, they were really kind of looking at it more from a FISMA perspective, as I talked about. And they really, um, and, and so the, with the CFO and, and my office together went into FEMA, we did some training, and, um, and the CFO and the CIO at FEMA really, uh, they, they instituted a whole program around how to review NFRs before they make assertions back to the auditors that, that the findings have been closed. They put that process in place, and, uh, and the auditor can, can uh, verify this, but I, but in my view, what FEMA is doing today in that regard is the best practice for the government. Um, and as a result, I, I mean, I, I can't speak for the 2000s of an audit. We're still in the middle of it. Yeah. I really don't know how we're going to end up. I hope we'll end up, I, I'm, I'm confident we'll end up in a better place. But I think with FEMA, you will see significant progress uh, in, for that very reason. Good. Mr. McCoy. Um, yes, sir. Um, we are identifying this year that um, the Department is making uh, progress. As uh, Mr. West said, the audit is ongoing. Um, it will be over in approximately two weeks. Uh, at that point in time, we will be issuing the report. We have identified um, improvement at FEMA. Um, last year, as noted in the report, FEMA said they had closed 80 percent percent plus of their NFRs at the beginning of the audit of those they identified, and KPMG disagreed with that. This year, all the ones that KPMG have completed looking at, KPMG concurs with management that the findings have, in fact, been closed. So there, there is definite improvement this year. Yeah. Thank you. I yield to the ranking member. And um, the, uh, my intent is the votes just went up. Uh, there's going to be one vote and then a uh, debate, motion to recommit debate, and, and then another series of votes. So um, what my intent is is go for to about quarter of, get what we can in. Um, I'm going to go over 
cast a one vote, um, come back, and, and it may just be me coming back, depending on, on the schedule, because we'll have maybe another 25-minute window, so you're not here waiting very long, come back, have another 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll wrap up when we go back for the final series. So with that, I yield to the ranking member. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Sherry, I guess I'll start with you. Um, given the absence of an integrated, streamlined financial management program at FEMA, um, will FEMA continue to produce a reliable financial data using its current information technology system, which is still antiquated? Yes, sir, you make a very good point. Um, FEMA system is old, it's outdated, it's, it's proprietary, it's, um, it, it's, I, I believe it's even not even supported at this particular point. Um, FEMA, like many of the components where they have a legacy system that's not completely modernized, <laughs> It, um, you know, with the, with the right patches in it and the right configuration management, um, they tend they, they have to have various compensating controls or manual controls, things that are outside of those application controls within a well performing system, in order to be able to compensate for some of those weaknesses. So FEMA is able to attest to represent to their balances at this particular point. As you know, sir, we're still just doing a balance sheet audit and as well as the custodial statement. But at this point, they are able to do it. But that with a modern system it would clearly be a more efficient process and one that would not have to, you'd have to develop audit trails outside of the system. Instead, the auditor should be able to rely on those audit trails within the system if you have strong application controls. So it, again, it's just not as an efficient process and that there are manual, uh, manual controls that are required, which is, as, as you know, um, are subject to, you know, they're prone to uh, errors, maybe not as accurate and certainly not as timely. Right. Uh, let me ask this. If there's a situation where the auditor comes in and they make these recommendations and you feel that it's really not necessary, that your information is accurate and that, uh, uh, that there's no need to make any changes, what happens in a situation like that um, right down the line? Just, I'll start real quickly. We've yeah. been very, very fortunate. Uh, um, you know, since I've been at the department for a little over four and a half years, we've had an incredible relationship with the IG as well as with our external auditors. Um, they've made every effort to get to know the component very well, and we've made very effort through every effort in my office to be able to make sure that we had a, a real good understanding of exactly what those recommendations are. So I'm happy to report that there are, are um, there really are not times where we just absolutely disagree with the auditor. Uh, what be, as Mr. West had pointed out, many times your notice of finding for rec of recommendations really highlights certain conditions. Sometimes they don't necessarily go to the root cause. One of the best practices that the auditors in implemented this year, actually maybe even last year, was to have the department really take a look at what those root causes are. So what they do is when they give us a particular finding, they don't necessarily come right out and give you the roadmap on how to fix this. This has been really important in really developing competencies within the department, really training people on really how, how do you understand what's in that notice of finding of recommendation and how do you go about fixing it. So I'm pleased to report that we really don't have um, disagreements agreements with the auditors. We may, they may not prescribe necessarily how we go about fixing something. Um, leave it up to the department to figure that out and really the way we've been working, you know, for the, since I've been with the department, really building those, those competencies uh, so, so that we're able to address it uh, with recommendations that are actually going to fix the problems. Right. Wes, do you want to comment on that? Yes, sir. I, I would make two comments and I would, I would agree with uh, Ms. Sherry uh, completely about the auditors. I think um, not only we, we've really been fortunate in that we've had a lot of continuity in the IG office for a number of years, pretty much since the beginning, um, as well as with the with the uh, financial auditors, KPMG. They that's the same audit team, with a few exceptions or a few changes, I guess. The same audit team have been our financial auditors for a number of years. And as a result, of that we've gotten to know them, and um, and we we have a very close working relationship as a result of that. Uh, the other thing I would say is that to the, I, I would agree with Ms. Sherry, that there are very few times when there's just disagreement. Um, and we generally sit down and, and work through what the issue is and we generally come to an agreement. Um, the, the one area where, where in the past maybe there has been, um, and this goes back to FEMA again, a, a bit of an, an issue that, that we've resolved in policy actually now is, is around, uh, the, you know, FISMA, you know, and, and the audit standards for FISMA and, and with the NIST standards. Uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology Standards, 
Um, and then the FISCAM, or the Financial Information Security Controls Audit Manual, published by GAO. And they really are coming at from different perspectives. And so we think something is good in the FISMA world, but there are additional things we need to do to be able to show controls were effective for the entire year, for example. And so as a result of that, we have actually modified policy. We have uh, systems that, that we believe are uh, material to the financial statement. Uh, we call, now call them in policy CFO designated financial systems, and we put additional requirements in policy um, specific to those systems. So there really is no confusion. In, uh, I mean, I don't say no, but, but we have really minimized the confusion. And generally, when the auditors say this is an issue, they are referring back to our policy, and, um, and it is something that we would, uh, we would agree with. You want to add? To yes, sir. Um, as Mr. Uh, Sorry. The mic on. As Ms. Sherry indicated, two years ago we started um, the policy of having the department evaluate the NFR and come up with the best recommendation or the best way that the department could remediate the rec remediate it. Management knows their core business is better than the auditors. We identify the condition, um, but we may not always identify the root cause. So that definitely improved uh, the remediations in 2009 and 10, um, as well as 11. Also, I think this year, uh, with the department's involvement, at FEMA, uh, it, it's, it's produced more of a culture change related to the financial statement audit and improvements with the financial statement NFRs and, and remediation. So there's definitely been improvement this year at FEMA. Well, I'm happy to hear that because, you know, um, looking at it from the outside, you know, you would think that even if recommendations are made that there would become a dispute and it would take years and years to sort of work it through. So I'm happy to know that's not the case. On that note, uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank the gentleman. Um, picking up on that issue, um, not so much disagreements between the department and auditors, but the uh, relationship between the department and the components. And, and one of the uh, things I think has helped get us uh, heading in a, in a strong direction is the relationship between Mr. West and Ms. Sherry, the two of you partnering and working hand in hand at the department level. Um, and I think that's paid great dividends and will continue to. And, and I thank you for that approach and that leadership you're providing. Um, one of the challenges you have is you're called to testify here about the audits of the department and you know, the challenges uh, in the audits of some of the specific components, FEMA in particular, ICE, Coast Guard. Um, the relationship that you have with your counterparts or, I would say, subordinates, they may not see it that way, um, but for the CFO at FEMA, CIO um, at FEMA or ICE, you know, uh, can you share, um, I, I guess, is there a um, chain of command that's been strengthened within the department that if, if you as you know, acting CFO for the department contact FEMA, CFO, and about, you know, remediation requirements or whatever it may be in this area, um, that it's seen as um, that individual being given, in essence, an order or marching orders, you know, from a, su a superior. Um, yes, Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm happy to say that um, in the time that I've been at DHS, what I've really seen is a great evolution um, in that relationship. Um, I do believe that the, the CFOs, the components, the CIOs, the, C, the security officers and the chief financial officers within each of the components do look to the, to the department to really to set the tone on overall financial management and are not out there basically trying to, trying to circumvent the policies of the department. Um, we do this in many ways. We set, we, we meet at the beginning of the year and then we meet periodically throughout the year to really jointly set what our strategic plan is for the department. And what we do is we set out what our objectives are. At the beginning of last year, we set out the very aggressive um, uh, goal of obtaining a qualified opinion this year on our balance sheet. The primary reason we needed to do that is because we want to be able to have a full scope audit. Recognizing I was never going to be able to bring the department to that, um, to be able to have that additional scrutiny over all of our statements until such time as we got a balance sheet, we jointly set out, all the CFOs jointly set out to, in, the, in our strategic plan was to be able to obtain a qualified opinion this year, which meant that many, that 
in particular, the Coast Guard had a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. but many of the other components had their, their objectives as well that they really needed to achieve. Um, and then what we do is we, period, we, we, we have a, a, a statements that they sign off on to be able to agree to these particular goals, and then we meet with them periodically on them. Um, I'm happy to report that we have very little difficulty um, in being able to work together on our overall objective as, as a community in DHS. And that, that's good to hear. Um, I guess a, a specific follow-up is if, uh, in, in laying out that game plan of how to go forward, if you have, uh, whether it's Coast Guard or FEMA, ICE, any of the component uh, entities that is not meeting what they need to do to have the overall departments succeed in this effort, um, how do you rectify that? Uh, do you, are you able, because you don't have any say in the hiring or firing or uh, of those component CFOs, is that correct? We, we actually, the department does have a role in being able to hire certain people within, certain people within the components, and that would include both the C chief financial officer, the deputy chief financial officer, and other key positions such as the budget director. So would you go to the undersecretary? I, 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 absolutely. And, and, um, and, and if I had any issues at this particular point, I have um, uh, direct lines to the secretary as well as the deputy secretary and the undersecretary. In fact, I meet with the deputy secretary on a very regular basis. Every Thursday morning we get together. There is a group of her key leaders that get together and meet with her on, on a myriad of, of financial management issues. Clearly, over the last couple of months, one of those key issues has been the audit. With the, with the deputy secretary? Yes, that is correct. Each, each Thursday? Absolutely. Okay. With the, and, and then we meet on a regular basis, on a less regular basis with the secretary, but we, we get that information up to her as well. With the undersecretary for management, we meet with him on a biweekly basis. We meet with him very regularly, but we meet with him on a biweekly uh, bi basis on specific audit issues. And the deputy secretary has made, in fact, a statement that she made to me, um, you know, 45 days ago or so was that if there is any time that you need me to be able to, quote, unquote, bang ahead, she said, you call me at any time. She said, it doesn't matter when it is. If you need me to get behind you in order to be able to make sure that we achieve the objectives that we set out this year, you, you reach out. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that because that, that's one of the concerns, and we, we've seen it in the past with uh, Ranking Member Townsend, with NASA, a similar type challenge where the, 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 administra I mean, the administration at the senior level, but then you had all the separate NASA centers that weren't necessarily directly responding to the uh, the CFO. So I'm I'm glad to hear that, and it also goes to the issue that you know, that we don't have. You know, we're grateful for the great work you're doing, but a, a Senate confirmed compliance with the statute as um, as written, Senate confirmed CFO, which I, I believe would give you even greater weight within the uh, department when you're out there with those component agencies. But I'm glad to hear that. Um, that the effort is to make sure that is what's happening that from the, the top down. So, um, I'm going to try to squeeze one one more uh, question here before. And as I say, I'm going to then run over, cast one vote, come back, have about 20 minutes or so for for a couple more questions, and then we'll we'll not hold you again because it'll it'll be a little while after that before the vote series ends. Um, on the uh, most significant uh, uh, weaknesses identified, uh, access controls, um, and, and three in particular, access controls, segregation of duties, contingency planning. Um, and, and I'll maybe get into uh, them in a little more detail when I come back. But I, I want to, uh, I guess, contingency planning. Um, that one, the, the, this department came out of the attack of 9-11. And, and, you know, the fact that we were a nation in attack and, and there was obviously an unprecedented emergency. Um, yet we have this department not setting the example for the rest of the, of the federal government as we like it to, to better prepare for those type of emergencies in, in how you, you know, manage your, uh, your data, your information technology system. So um, what, what, where are we and, and you know, where do we need, uh, what do we need to do to, to address that, that DHS of all the departments and agencies is the role model for contingency planning when it comes to information security? Sir, I'll, I'll speak to that specifically to financial systems in, in the 2010 audit. Um, uh, you're right. <laughs> what can I say? The, the, uh, but all systems, all financial systems and, and all NFRs associated with contingency planning, in the 2008 audit, we went back directly to the components and said you either you need to update your contingency plan. If you don't have one, you need to produce one. And, um, and every one of those systems now has a contingency plan that has been tested. 
Um, we're, we're still waiting on the results from the auditors as to how we close it out, um, with uh, uh, some exceptions. And those exceptions, we now have required a plan of action from each component for each system. Which, saying, which, saying, which, uh, which component or systems? that I, I would have to get back to you okay. on, on the details, if you would like. Yeah. Um, but, but those, we, we, have, uh, we do have plan of actions for those, uh, and we've given them six months. And in some cases, big systems, there, there's a bit of a lift to get them. So we've given them six months, but within six months, those will all be remediated. Okay. okay. Good. Uh, glad to hear. I, I think that's important because, again, uh, setting that example, given the, the, uh, what, how your department came to be formed uh, in, in response to uh, an emergency. Um, on the issue of, um, uh, I'll, I'll try to squeeze this in here quickly, uh, segregation of duties. Um, again, it seems to me I look at it as a more basic internal control, that if you're, you know, you can't be the one, you know, proving the check and writing the check and, and then checking if the check, I mean, why, why are we failing in that regard? Um, again, a, a fairly straightforward internal control. I agree, Chairman. It is absolutely a, one of the most important internal controls that you should have. I, and I think that there is two pieces of it. One is from a functional standpoint, what are those particular roles and responsibilities that someone should have that potentially could be in conflict, in conflict to cause an internal control weakness? So kind of the best practice is, you know, you shouldn't be able to uh, certify a payment as well as initiate, a, uh, you know, a PO or something, a procurement uh, purchase order or something. Um, so the ability to be able to articulate what those uh, conflicting roles are um, is very critical, and the Department has been able to do that. We've done that for some time as part of our A123 process. The difficulty gets into is when you're actually in the system, if you have a particular system that allows you to do those types of things. So in other words, you know you shouldn't you know, mm -hmm. enter a purchase order and then turn around and improve a payment, but if the system either does not have those preventative control, application controls in them, or or it's not, they're not configured appropriately, there's the possibility that you could go in there and do that as well. Or, or I assume we're trying to be, uh, uh, well identify those system you know, weaknesses to, to then, to, correct? That, that, that's exactly right. And those are clearly, what, those are the high risk ones. And, and one of the processes that we did, or our approach this year over the last couple of years, in particular this year, was to really look at those high risk ones, such as segregation of duties. And if you, if you have a particular system that, that is not configured in a way that prevents you from doing that, what are those detective controls that you have out there? So developing those policies and procedures, mm -hmm. training people so that they know that those are incompatible responsibilities, and then to the extent possible, going in behind and making sure that some Something hasn't happened. And get to that root cause. Uh, Absolutely. Yes, sir. That's With right. that, uh, we're going to stand in recess for about 10 minutes, and I'll be right back.